At the top of this slide are two very strange examples of nucleophilic substitution reactions. Simple chlorobenzene, just a chlorine linked to a benzene ring, reacts with sodium hydroxide at very high temperature, followed by acid treatment to protonate the phenoxide anion, and we get neutral phenol. In the right-hand reaction, we've again got chlorobenzene, one of the simplest halobenzenes imaginable, reacting with amide anion, sodium amide, NaNH2, in liquid ammonia solution to give aniline after treatment with acid to protonate the N minus, the negative charge on nitrogen. Amide anion, by the way, is a fantastic nucleophile, similar to OH minus, but even more reactive because nitrogen is less electronegative than oxygen. What's strange about these reactions? Well, take a minute and pause the video and think this through. How does this fly in the face of what we've already talked about with respect to nucleophilic aromatic substitution? We said earlier that an electron withdrawing group was required in the ortho or para position with respect to the leaving group to get this reaction to go. Where's the nitro group, right? Where is the severely electron deficient ring? These are halobenzenes. And when we talked about electrophilic aromatic substitution earlier, we noted that these are weakly deactivated toward EAS. So they're not that electron deficient. They don't seem to be electrophilic enough to engage with nucleophiles in nucleophilic aromatic substitution reactions. What in the world is going on? Well, let's add a substituent to the ring to see if we can gain some more insight into this. So on the bottom reaction here, we've got a paramethyl chlorobenzene. That paramethyl group is going to help us figure out what's going on, as we'll see. In this reaction, again, we're using the amide anion NH2- in liquid ammonia solution as the nucleophile. And after acid treatment, we get not one, but two constitutionally isomeric or regioisomeric anilines. This is parachlorotoluene, is another way to name the compound. And so the para Aniline. The, the paramethyl aniline is the expected product. This seems to be derived from addition of the nucleophile here, followed by loss of the chloride leaving group, and then protonation of an N minus generated under the reaction conditions with acid. But we also get the meta product, and this seems bizarre. This looks like substitution not at the carbon bearing the leaving group, but at one of the meta positions next door to that carbon. And so this cannot involve just addition followed by elimination, right? Since something's going on at those positions next to the carbon bearing the chlorine. What this suggests is that there's some kind of different mechanism going on here. It's not an SNAR or addition elimination mechanism. Something else is going on. A mechanism that accounts for these observations invokes elimination of the leaving group first followed by addition of the nucleophile. And this is the reverse order of the steps in the sort of canonical or typical SNAR mechanism, but it accounts for all of our observations, in particular this bizarre substitution at a position that originally was not linked to the leaving group. And to begin exploring this in detail, I want to look at this reaction of parachlorotoluene with the methyl substituent in a little, little more detail. The mechanism we're going to draw is going to account for both the para and the meta products. First of all, I just want to draw an alternative resonance form of this structure that puts a double bond here for reasons of convenience we'll see later. This is going to lead to a resonance form of the key reactive benzyne intermediate that we'll encounter here in a second that is um, sensible looking, shall we say, relatively sensible looking. All right, what's going on here? Well, NH2- is a good nucleophile, but is also a very, very strong base. And this is typical of benzyne-involved reactions. They need a really, really strong base like NH2 around, or a weaker base like OH- at very, very, very high temperature. NH2 is capable of deprotonating, at least reversibly, this hydrogen that is next door to the carbon bearing the leaving group. And this leads to a 2-chlorophenyl anion structure that you see right here. This structure contains a lone pair and a formal negative charge on carbon adjacent to a good leaving group in the chloride. And so beta elimination can take place. Chloride anion gets kicked off, and we end up with a very bizarre looking reactive intermediate with a triple bond inside the six-membered ring. Crazy, but accounts for the observations. And evidence for this intermediate has been picked up 
through other means and other types of reactions over the years as well. By the way, here I'm showing a two-step mechanism with proton transfer followed by beta elimination. This reactive intermediate could also be generated through a one-step E2 type elimination, and really either mechanism is fine for our purposes. This reactive intermediate with a triple bond inside the benzene ring is known as a benzyne. It's a lot like benzene. We still have, for example, aromaticity, six pi electrons, part of a conjugated system, but now we've got a triple bond, and that's the origin of the ine in the name. It's a benzyne. Benzyne is electrophilic at two positions, the two carbons of the triple bond. Addition of a nucleophile to either of those carbons would create a trigonal planar center, actually two trigonal planar centers, um, and would relieve this, the horrible strain built into this molecule, right? But there are two electrophilic positions, so the nucleophile could add at either of those carbons highlighted in blue. Addition to the top carbon takes us to the product that would be expected via standard SNAR addition elimination with the NH2 group para to the methyl. However, addition to the bottom carbon takes us to a product after proton transfer to this phenyl anion with the amino group at carbon 2, in which the amino group is now meta to the methyl group. And notice we arrived at this product because elimination made this bottom carbon electrophilic. Even though it didn't have a leaving group originally, it becomes electrophilic after elimination of the leaving group. That's how we were able ultimately to end up with the meta product. So this benzyne intermediate is derived from first elimination via either proton transfer and beta elimination or direct E2, followed by addition of the nucleophile, which is going to establish that nucleophile carbon bond either this structure or this structure, and then a proton transfer from NH3 gives the neutral product. Benzynes can be used as diels alder dienophiles via their triple bond, and we end up with benzene-fused cyclohexene or cyclohexadiene products. And arines derived from other aromatic compounds can also be made, pyridines in particular, containing a triple carbon-carbon triple bond within a pyridine ring have been observed. I did briefly want to highlight the fact that benzynes can be used as dienophiles in Diels-Alder reactions to show you what this, this looks like because it actually gives a pretty structurally interesting product. Benzyne via its triple bond can act as a dienophile, and if we combine it with a diene such as furan right here, typical concerted Diels-Alder electron flow leads us to a product in which there is an intact benzene ring. It's a cyclohexadiene, just as if we had used an alkyne as the dienophile in a Diels-Alder reaction. It's just that alkyne happened to be tethered to um, four other carbons, leaving us with an intact benzene ring in the product. This is a pretty neat way to synthesize these cyclohexenes fused to a benzene ring, often with other substituents at these positions uh, if a structurally complex diene is used. The triple bond in benzene is not quite a triple bond because of the severe strain that would come along with linear geometry inside a six-membered ring. Those triply bonded carbons are actually bent in benzene, and this leads to really a diradical kind of structure as opposed to a bona fide triple bond. The carbons are not quite sp hybridized, they're more sp2, and the triple bond kind of looks like two electrons that are not exactly paired. That, that second pi bond is a very, very weak pi bond. One thing I wanted to point out before we get into that in more detail is that there is an alternative resonance form of benzene um, without any radical or unpaired electrons that we get just by shifting electrons around the benzene ring, right? Imagine I went like this and like that and like that. That's going to lead to a structure with three consecutive double bonds here, here, and here. And this is a cumulated triene inside a six-membered ring, just another pretty much equivalent way to think about the benzene molecule without a triple bond, but as a cumulated triene. Now, what about this di-radical resonance structure? Let's talk about that a little bit more. Well, these two electrons, notice what we've done to generate this structure is we've broken this triple bond up homolytically and put one electron on each of the carbons involved. The reason this is a resonance form worth keeping in mind is that 
the orbitals that overlap to form the second pi bond in the triple bond of benzyne really are not p orbitals. They're really fairly close to sp2 hybrids, actually. And so there is a pi bond here, but it's quite weak because these orbitals are not exactly well aligned in a side-on manner. So it can be thought of as a diradical. Even so, though, this electron uh, density map shows us that the bulk of the electron density in benzene is near the triple bond. And, and so um, these electrons are highly reactive. And uh, although this doesn't exactly do it justice, we can add nucleophiles into either of these carbons as well.